being here today. I like to think I'm taller than I actually am. Um, so good morning. Uh, welcome to the Jane Addams Resource Corporation, or JARC as we are more commonly known. Uh, my name is Reagan Brewer Johnson, and I am privileged to serve as the president of JARC. Uh, first off, I'd like to welcome all of you, especially our distinguished mayor, um, our dedicated partners from the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, uh, representatives from the Baltimore Workforce Development Board, as well as train up grantees and also members of the press. At JARC, um, our mission is to ensure that people who work do not live in poverty. To accomplish this mission, we offer free job training programs that lead to career pathways in manufacturing and construction. These are jobs that offer family sustaining wages, full benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. We combine our technical skills training with support services that are aimed at creating financial stability for individuals who are living below the poverty line. And then we work towards the goal of not only financial self-sufficiency, but also wealth creation. So I'd like to thank Mayor Scott and the whole team at MOED for their leadership and vision on the train up model. The train up model is not just another grant opportunity for JARC, um, it's really an opportunity for Baltimore to build a comprehensive system uh, around our high quality technical skills training programs represented by these 17 organizations that stand here with me today. So we are honored to host Mayor Scott this morning um, and it's my pleasure to introduce him. Uh, Mayor Scott, we look forward to partnering with you and your team at MOED on this opportunity to help Baltimore residents achieve financial self-sufficiency and achieve their career goals. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And thank you, uh, uh, Reagan, for the kind introduction and, more importantly, for your partnership for our city. And I want to uh, give a special uh, shout out and thanks to uh, JARC for hosting us here uh, this morning in my home neighborhood of Park Heights uh, in a building that I spent a lot of time in as a kid when it was Park Heights Elementary. Uh, but we are glad to be here and really excited to be here today to announce the historic strides we are making in Baltimore City uh, uh, here around employment and workforce development. As you all know, as I just said, this is where I grew up and this community will always hold a very special place in my heart and will always be home. But our residents and communities that were uh, systematically disadvantaged long before COVID-19 showed up on our doorsteps and then disproportionately uh, impacted by COVID and the pandemic itself deserve the opportunity uh, to fully participate in and benefit from uh, being in our workforce. And having access to a high uh, quality training resources is an essential piece of that puzzle. Uh, back in November, you may remember, I allocated a significant portion of uh, the city's ARPA funding to my Office of Employment and Development, led by our fabulous leader in Jason Perkins Cohen, to initiate Train Up. Uh, this program is specifically designed to provide free, I'm going to say that again, free 99 job training uh, to unemployed and underemployed residents who were impacted by COVID-19 and the pandemic. Uh, this is the largest one-time investment ever made into the Baltimore workforce uh, in training to date, totaling nearly $5 million in the first year alone. Through a MOED, uh, train up invested in 17 organizations that represent uh, Baltimore's growing industries, which include many organizations that you are all familiar with, like uh, the Baltimore Alliance for Careers in Health, Biotechnical Institute of Maryland, uh, Builders and Jumpstart, Bite Back, uh, Catholic Charities of Baltimore, the Center for Urban Families, Civic Works, uh, Equality, Equitation, uh, Go Goodwill, Can, Hope Incorporated, uh, JARC, Maryland New Directions, Empower, Open, Open Works, uh, Periscope Scholars, Unite Here, and Vehicles for Change. And our residents here in Baltimore, we know, face challenges every day that directly impact their ability to get a job and advance their careers uh, in order to support themselves and their family. Which is why targeting this population and providing them with free resources that will meet them where they are, right where they are, is so significant. Train up is more than training, simply put. 
It offers a holistic approach to meet the needs of our residents by equipping them with the tools and resources that will not only help them obtain a job, but will help them keep that job and maximize the opportunity. As a part of that program, participants will have access to free legal services, behavioral mental health services, and financial empowerment counseling, because we know that these wraparound services are critical to ensuring a participant's success, uh, not only for them, but for uh, their families in our community and ultimately the city of Baltimore. Uh, gone are the days when we can just provide a training program and give someone a skill. We have to dig deeper to make sure that we're having the deepest impact for those individuals and their families. Uh, train up is a part of our ongoing effort to combat systematic racism that has caused disparities in housing, transportation, education, and health, all of which impact access to uh, jobs and opportunities and which is on full display if you just look outside of, of the walls of this building here in Park Heights. This will help shift employment among all workers, especially black workers, to Baltimore's growing industries offering high wage jobs so that everyone in the richest state, in the richest country in the history of the world has the ability to fully participate in our economy. And before I pass the mic, I also want to thank uh, Comcast, our partners from Comcast for donating 1,000 laptops to train up and hire up participants. Let's give them a round of applause for that. Because we know how important having that simple piece of equipment, what that means now for anyone trying to enter or further themselves in the, in the workplace. Now, uh, let's continue getting our residents back to work and moving our city forward on a path to uh, equitable prosperity. Here to tell us a little bit more about Train Up is our fabulous director of the Mayor's Office of Employment and Development, Jason Perkins Cohen. Jason? Uh, thank you, Mayor Scott. Uh, thank you for all of your support for Baltimore workers and Baltimore employers. I want to thank uh, the workforce development providers behind me. It's like a workforce development Thanksgiving here today. Uh, in person, exactly. So important. Um, before I talk about train up, um, I want to take a moment to provide some context uh, because, as the, as the mayor said, training is absolutely essential. Uh, and it's a critical strategy of the city's recovery effort and the focus of today. But I don't want anyone to think that it is the only strategy. So very briefly, uh, MOED is committed to economic justice for Baltimore residents. So here are some of our other recovery efforts. And again, following on the theme of Reagan and Mayor Scott, these are all meant to work together. These are not individual strategies. So briefly, immediate job placement through Higher Up, which is an initiative that allows residents to go to work and provide public service, supporting our small minority businesses by subsidizing wages for hiring and rehiring city workers up to $6,000 per person. Apprenticeships, over 100 apprenticeships, 100 apprentices will be supported through an earn and learn model and increasing access and inclusion to workforce services by hiring, mo we've already hired actually, mobile career navigators to go directly into the community, into our neighborhoods and expanding our community job hub models. But today we're here to celebrate uh, train up. And as the mayor said, but it's worth repeating, this is the largest investment in workforce training in our city's history. And it's the largest investment both in terms of the dollars and the number of partners here we have today. And that's important. It's not just about bean counting, but it's again about providing opportunities. So let me talk about what this really means to the residents of Baltimore and to employers. So if you're a resident, you're looking for work, you're looking for a better job, what this means is to you is that you've got good, strong op options to help you go to work in a job that offers the opportunity to provide for you and your family. In fact, you've got 17 different options and they're located throughout our city and they're represented here today. All of these training options are aimed at the city's strongest industries in terms of wage growth and those most impacted by the pandemic. So I want to make this very real to our residents and, and in terms of what it offers. And I'm not going to go through every type of job that's available, but just starting with A, in the automotive industry, you can become a mechanic. You can get on the path to becoming a mechanic. We know that that pays good wages. 
in construction. You can get on the path to becoming an electrician, a carpenter, a plumber, a heavy equipment operator, a solar installation technician, a welder. Again, all good jobs, all providing family sustaining wages. IT, we know is a growing and incre uh, incredibly important industry in our city. Lots of good jobs through these providers, all free. IT technician, operations support specialist, business analyst, infrastructure manager. Healthcare, we know how important healthcare is in our city and the great institutions we have. I'm not gonna name every job you can, go, you can get free training for, but just a few. Emergency medical technician, peer recovery specialist, pharmacy technician, phlebotomist, and in manufacturing, CNC uh, machinist, and industrial sewing machine operator. I took the time to list some of those jobs because I wanted to be clear about the diversity of opportunities. There is literally something for everyone in these opportunities behind me. They're not random programs. They're intentionally directed towards career pathways offering a strong wage. And we're gonna support our residents all along the way in this pathway. I'm gonna uh, reference what the mayor talked about. I wanna thank Comcast, Michael Parker, Don Kirkstetter for a thousand laptops to residents who are gonna be in these programs so they can participate virtually and they can access jobs. We know today so many jobs you have to apply online. It's a barrier for our residents and I wanna thank you for helping to address that barrier. As the mayor said, every city will have access to free literacy services to help connect to these opportunities and to jobs. Every resident in these programs will have not only legal assistance, but from an attorney, behavioral health support from a clinician, financial empowerment services from a counselor. What you see in this room today, all the different services coming together in harmony and in determination to support our residents, it's what a coordinated workforce system looks like. So Mr. Mayor, you said it, I'm gonna repeat it again. This isn't just about training. This is about opportunity. And these opportunities all come with a J-O-B because all of the partners here behind me today, all of them have employers that are standing with them and behind them ready to hire. So let's hear from one of our employer partners. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce Mark Brody, who is from Weller Development and also a member of the Baltimore Workforce Development Board. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So you've heard today that folks are gonna be prepared. They're gonna be ready. They're gonna be well-trained. They're Baltimore City residents. But on the back end, it is extremely important that employers like ourselves in Port Covington, North Baltimore, West Baltimore, East Baltimore, Baltimore County, we make it a priority to think outside of the box and hire these individuals who are gonna be directly from families here in Baltimore. We cannot expect people to come from outside, as the mayor always says. You know, we can't expect people to come to Baltimore from outside and grow our population. We need to grow our population we already have here. This is a direct investment under the leadership of Mayor Scott to improve our workforce in Baltimore. So long gone will be the excuse that, you know, there's a skills gap. We just can't find good workers in Baltimore. They're going to be there. They're going to be ready. And uh, we should be able to hire them and be ready to hire them. So please. Uh, you know, employers, think outside the box, reach out to Center for Urban Families, reach out to Bite Back, reach out to some of these groups that are gonna be training individuals to be ready for the workforce. And they could be your next CEO, they could be your next president. Uh, give them a chance. Uh, uh, really think about the future of Baltimore and where your place in it uh, uh, is. Are you gonna be part of the problem or part of the solution? Uh, Mayor Scott and the city of Baltimore have done their role here. They've done their part. The training is gonna be there. The people are gonna be ready and we should be ready to hire them. Uh, one of those folks, uh, Shatidra Butler, who you're gonna hear from next, I asked her this morning, what would you like me to say to other employers? And she said just simply that we're prepared. We're gonna be prepared, and I think that that's the main point. Um, so I'd like to introduce Shatidra Butler now to come up and speak, um, and thank you so much for being here today. Hello, my name is Shatidra Butler. I'm 21 years old from Baltimore, Maryland. I had first heard about Jock from a friend. I was asking around, asking people where could I go to get certified in welding. I first learned about welding from the time I spent in New York City. I met a couple of art sculptors and they were all saying how they needed welders to put their sculptures together. I thought it would be really nice to be able to design a sculpture and put it together myself. When I first came to Jock, I had to take a placement test that would determine if I will be fast track welding or fundamentals. I was a couple of points off from fast track welding, so I actually started off in fundamentals. 
In fundamentals, we learned math and how to properly read diagrams to assemble things. Once I passed out of the fundamentals class in my MS1 class, I completed OSHA 10, and then I went straight into the welding booth. I'm currently working on my 3G stick welding test. Once I complete that, I'll move on to 4G stick welding test. Once I complete that, I'll move on to MIG welding. At the end of JARC, I'll walk away with a certification in stick welding and in MIG welding. I plan on working at a welding fabrication shop where I can use the skills I learned from JARC while also learning new things. I'm currently in the process of joining the National Guard. One of the jobs that they offer are auto mechanic. I'll be able to use what I learned at JARC while also learning something new. My goal is to complete all these things all while com completing my art portfolio for college. Thank you. Hearing that makes me feel like I need to do more with my life. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, and thank you. And we will take questions. Oh, he's got to turn the mic on first. Sorry. Anybody? Lisa? No. Kenzie? When it comes to, sorry. I can hear you. Okay. Um, when it comes to the ARPA spending and the, the dashboard, the city's dashboard doesn't seem to match the announcement and the dollar amounts that you've made from the various announcements. Can you explain when that will be updated so the public can see how much money is being spent and where? Yeah, it'll be consistently updated. And this is actually our dashboard. We actually were asked today uh, from King County and Washington if we could talk to them so that they can maybe replicate it. So our dashboard <coughs> is actually being looked at from folks around the country. Uh, we will be continuously updating it as accordance with how we have to update Treasury. And that's how we'll do it. So when it comes to like programs like, um, for example, Safe Streets or the gun violence prevention programs, I know that it was $50 million for community programs, uh, $22 million was set aside for the gun violence prevention, but online it only shows about, a, about 18. Is that because the money hasn't been allocated yet or? As money gets allocated and goes okay. through the process, the, the procurement process that this city has, the dashboard will be updated just like any other dashboard. When we're going to put it there as it's updated, as the money goes out, but we are not going to usurp the process just to uh, show the money there. We're going to allocate it in that dashboard as it goes out, making sure that when it hits those organizations that it will be reflected. Okay. And then speaking of Safe Streets, I know that the effectiveness is um, currently being studied by a variety of sources, including the University of Maryland going out doing some qualitative research. Given the recent um, tragic losses of three Safe Streets workers. Do you think that it's appropriate for the city to pause future no. funding? No, we won't. Uh, because the same way that we honor Officer Holly's death or any police officer's death when they die in the line of duty, by continuing their work, we're going to do the same thing for the Safe Streets. I, I know what my brother Dante Barksdale would say to me. He would say, no, Brandon, go further, go deeper. Don't back away from the work. Uh, we know, what we're going to be doing is working with our state partners and others, as I said to you before, about figuring out ways to give them basic protection like things, like bulletproof vests, mm -hmm. but the work must go on. And if you ask the workers, the people that are the, the closest to it, McKenzie, they're going to tell you, no, we're not going to stop because the work we know it works. It's been proven to work time and time and time again. Uh, we know that those are un, very tragic and unfortunate incidents that happened that impacted families and impacted our family as a, as a violence intervention and people involved in, in life-saving work in a deep way. But we're going to honor them by pushing forward the same way we will honor police officers' death by pushing forward. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. You're good now. It's green. About City Hall, um, I know that last week, I think you said you were having conversations. Yep. Have those conversations happened with the You'll hear from me tomorrow Hall? about City Hall reopening. Will that reopen? The announcement will come tomorrow? You'll hear from me tomorrow about City Hall reopening. Okay. <laughs>